rain. It's not stopping. <laughs> Good morning, we are heading up Bugarin here in Pilinga Rizal. It's our, well, me and Chaz's first bikepacking trip. We're with some friends heading to Hamok Base Camp in Santa Maria Laguna. Since it's our first bikepacking trip, it's our first time using these bags. My first time going on a bikepacking trip. We've had experience in mountaineering and packing hiking bags before, which generally allow us to carry more items. For this bikepacking trip, we had to choose essentials. Good thing the campsite already had cabins, so we didn't need to bring tents. And for this trip, the cabins felt like a luxury. Chaz and I split our items. In my saddlebag, I had clothes, our toiletries, and a cook set, while my bulkier slippers and my mug hanged outside. In my top two bags, I had bike tools and spare supplies underneath, while my snacks were on top for easy access. I even had a feed bag attached to my handlebar for another bottle. Front, I had our butane can and more snacks with a borrowed void strap to keep the bag from sagging down to my front tire. If you have any suggestions on how I can improve my setup, let me know in the comments. Curious how the others set up their bikes? Let's check them out. This is Chaz's Trek Emonda ALR carrying the other half of our stuff, Andros Surly Midnight Special that carried the heaviest load, and Carlos Sleek Trek Domani Rig. We started our ride at Robinson's Kainta. Our route passed the Manila East Road until Pililia Rizal. From there, we went up the Bugarin climb towards the Pililia Wind Farm. We made our way to Sampaloc Tanay, which is still in Rizal. Then we followed the Marilaki Highway until Santa Maria Laguna. Total distance for the first day was 88 kilometers with 752 meters of elevation gain. What's up? What's up? So we're pretty familiar with this route after riding here for how many years and with living in Metro Manila but it's our first time actually bringing stuff in these bags. Like this bag, it's our rock goes handlebar bag. I have this feed bag, saddle bag and stuff in my cargo bibs. So it's a different experience so and it's our first time going up a climb around 7 to 8 kilos heavier with our stuff. Very rolling. Ah, so rolling. Very, very rolling. So it's our first time here in this road connecting Bugarin to Sampaloc Tanay. And it's quite scenic, but there's a lot of very punchy climbs. So prepare yourself for that. They average around 10 to 13% at some parts. And but it's very scenic. It's relatively quiet compared to climbing the Tanay Sampaloc road which can get very very steep towards the end because it actually goes higher than Sampaloc and then you go down to the town How are you Chaz? Dying You will get there Mga 3 kilometers siguro 1 kilometer pa lang yun Suddenly 
nothing to uh, not hot. Rain or shine. Rain or shine. So now we're on the Marilake Highway and the last time I was here was during the Tanai Bike Challenge. Uh, this was the first part of the race where it was around a 30 kilometer uh, road section before heading into the gravel sections. With this part of Marilake, it's really one of the most scenic bike rides you can have from Man coming from Manila. Since it's further into the mountains, there's a lot of views of the Sierra Madre mountain range and you go further enough towards Infanta Quezon you'll even be able to see the ocean the Pacific Ocean but it's pretty far the nice part start around 60 kilometers from kilometer zero in Luneta Manila City you will have to climb a lot to get to these parts of the Sierra Madre and this is one of the best routes to do long rides endurance rides or what we're doing now, a bike packing trip. How do you feel sad? Wet. What else? What are you feeling right now? I want to go to bed. Fog's nice, but there's no view. Well, the only view is only fog. <laughs> Usually, you can see the entire Laguna Lake from here, but today it's just clouds. So, enjoy it, You know. Oh, 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 Walang view ngayon, you know? Sad. Mababa, mababa may view. Sending to sa Baguio. Your face is the view. Finally here, Hamok Base Camp. On our way out of base camp and we start our day by hiking our bikes <laughs> our casita was down within the camp 
it's really really foggy it's really rainy so I'm in my rain jacket something you need to bring whenever you come here to Sierra Madre because it's pretty high and it has its own microclimate Okay, right. this smells like... Right. Sleeping monitor. Hey, come here. Let's sleep, let's sleep long in the sky. Smile smell. for five seconds. <laughs> One, two, three. So day two, our plan today is we had our pictures taken at the Infanta Arc, the boundary between Laguna and Quezon. Now we're gonna have breakfast at Sinag Capitan and I'm just on the final climb up to Sinag and then after that we'll head down towards Tanay, go around Binangonan and into Metro Manila. Options on the way home back to Metro Manila. First was Teresa, that means we'd have to climb up Antipolo, which has an elevation gain of around 300 meters, I think. But Chad and I chose the Binangonan Loop, which is a lot flatter with some punchy segments like this one, but we wouldn't have to climb up that high, especially with all of the bags that we carry. Kev and Carlo uh, chose to go up Teresa because it's short, it's a shorter route for them home. While Chaz, me, and Andro took this Pinangonan route because it's closer to our houses. This Pinangonan route was the same route we took going to the camping grounds. The only trade off with passing through here is that the roads are more densely populated. Uh, it's a lot more busier because of all of the buses, trucks, bicycles, and whatever that pass through these main, main roads. content don't forget to like and subscribe 